So in a situation like this, we have a triangle and it may not have any right angles. We, we don't necessarily know for sure. Although looking at this one right here, this line segment here has a positive one slope and this has a negative one slope and perpendicular lines have slopes that are opposite and reciprocals. So it looks like we do actually have a right angle right there. If you're in doubt about a right angle like that, then what you would have to do to find the area is, oops, let's try that again, is draw a minimal rectangle around this and then cut away the extra right triangles to get the area of the remaining trial. So if we're triangles, so if we're not sure about that right angle there, and we would do this, this gives us a four by three rectangle. And so the area of the whole rectangle is 12. And then we have to take off this chunk here, which is three by three. So getting rid of that, that would be one half of a three by three triangle. And here we have one half of a one by one triangle. And down here, this is a four by two triangle. So we would take away one half of a four by two. So we're just gonna compare those and then we'll get the, the perimeter. So that would be 12 minus half of nine, four and a half minus uh, half of a whole, which is 0.5 or a half. And then half of eight would be minus four. So altogether, we're taking away five and four or nine. So the area there would have to be three, it looks like. Now, suppose we're sure this is a right angle right there, then I could say maybe that's the base and this is the height or vice versa. And to do that, I would need the lengths of those sides. Now, it turns out I do need the lengths of those sides anyway, because uh, I want to find the perimeter. I know that in this system here, the distance across to two points is one centimeter, and the distance down to another point is one centimeter. Uh, any diagonal distance is going to be something according to the Pythagorean theorem. So we have to apply the Pythagorean theorem here. So focusing on this side right here. In the upper left, it is part of a right triangle that is three by three. So according to the Pythagorean theorem, that missing side right there, the hypotenuse squared is equal to the square of the legs, which is three squared and three squared. Cleaning that up, that's gonna be nine plus nine or 18. And I want a number whose square is 18. So my number is the square root of 18. And we'll plug that into a calculator and get an approximation. That would be that side right here. Upper right, this side over here is part of a right triangle that is one by one. And so that side squared is equal to one squared plus one squared according to the Pythagorean theorem. One plus one is two. So the missing number is the square root of two. I'll check that on the calculator. And then for my last side here, let's make that one green. It's part of a triangle that is three by four. So that diagonal squared as part of this right triangle in the bottom right is going to be equal to three squared plus four squared. 9 plus 16 is going to give me 25. And I want its square root, which happens to be nice, which is 5. All right, so we have one nice side there, and the other ones aren't as nice. We're going to have to use a calculator to find those. Oops, calculator. So we want the square root of 18 and the square root of 2. 
So about 4.24 ish and 1.41. So to the nearest hundredth, it would be the combination of these three sides right there. So we're going to get four, five, ten, about ten point three five. And here I'm adding two rounded numbers, so it's possible I could be a little off in that hundredth spot. So to be sure, we could just add them up separately. So the square root of eighteen plus the square root of two plus five. And oh, I must have written something down wrong. That two four should have been a four two. Whoops. Then that would make this a six three. So rounded, rounded, combined. When I put them together without rounding, I get 10.67. So again, I compounded my rounding error accidentally the other way. Uh, so more accurate answer is 10.6, oh, sorry, 10.66. Now, just going to back to think about this as a right, actually a right triangle. And again, my claim is it is a right triangle because the red line has a slope of one and this bluish line over here has a slope of negative one and perpendicular lines, their slopes are opposites and reciprocals and negative one is the opposite and reciprocal of one. So then I should be able to multiply for the area the base of square root of two times the height of the square root of 18 and take half of that because it's a triangle. So this actually works out nice. Square root of two times the square root of 18 is the square root of two times 18, which is 36. 36 is a perfect square. It's the square root of six. So the square root of 36 is six and half of six is three which matches the answer we got the other way, but I think this is a way harder route to get there than what we did originally for the area by dissecting the rectangle. The key to the perimeter of, and for any diagonal is the Pythagorean theorem.